Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in the Coding a 2D Physics Engine series. In the last episode, I just went over some basic vector math that you should know before beginning this series. In this episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually build up our 2D primitives. So we're just going to get the classes together, get some helpful functions together for each of these primitives, and then just sort of have them in our toolbox. Then in the next tutorial, or possibly this tutorial too, depending on how much time we have, we'll actually start setting up intersection tester, which will test whether any of these two primitives are intersecting with each other. So let's go ahead and just start coding these. All right, so our first step in creating some primitives is creating a package where we can store all these primitives. So I'm just gonna go to our project and if you have your own project, just wherever you want. And I'm going to create a new package called this physics 2D. And so this is where we're going to store all of our physics 2D code. And it's important to denote this because even though we are making a 2D engine and 2D physics engine, if you ever decide in the future to add a 3D physics engine, it is helpful to be able to tell which, which parts of the physics live in which parts of your code. Okay. Next, we're going to create a package inside here and we're going to call this primitives. And while we're at it, since I don't really like this, we're gonna create a couple more packages that we will need in the future. So let's just go in here and say, create a new, whoops, a new package. And we will call this one rigid body, just so that we have these separated and we can tell. We may change that in the future too, but for now that works fine. Okay, and then once we do that, we'll go into here, we'll create a new primitive and we'll call this uh, box 2D. And I'm gonna create that. This is gonna be assumed to be our oriented box. We're gonna create another new primitive. We're gonna call this AABB. And 2D might be nice, but I'm just gonna leave it as this for now. We could change that in the future if we ever need to. And AABB is just an axis aligned bounding box. And all that means is that the box is aligned in the Y and X for it's not rotated. It's just a not rotated box. That's all that means, okay? Next, we're gonna create a circle. So we'll say circle. No need to say 2D here because circles are inherently 2D. If it was a sphere, then it's inherently 3D. And then lastly, we are going to create a class and call this Collider 2D. And this will be what all of these classes are going to inherit from. So Collider 2D is gonna have a couple functions that we will need. We're gonna first of all say that this extends component. Uh, this is part of the game engine series, so if you don't have that, once again, just have it extend whatever your entity component system or your component pattern is, or just don't worry about this too. You don't really have to. <laughs> then we're gonna say protected vector 2f offset equals a new vector 2f. So this will be an offset. It's gonna be initialized to zero, but eventually we're gonna allow it so that colliders can be offset from the objects that they're actually on top of. And then we're gonna have a public abstract float get inertia tensor. And this is some way complicated stuff that we will be doing in the future. So I'm going to comment this out for now and leave it to do here. Uh, implement this because this will be important once we get into actually like resolving forces and everything like that. But we don't need to worry about that right now. So if you're a circle, what the heck do you need? Well, circles are actually like one of the simplest shapes to have anyways. So it's really nice and easy to know exactly what we'll need. We'll need a float, which is our radius. It's literally it. And then I would say we also need a position but if we have a rigid body class, we're going to store copies of the position and everything inside of there. So I wouldn't worry about the position. So yeah, radius, that's all we need. And then we'll say public circle. And this will actually be empty. Let's not do anything with this too. We'll initialize the radius to 1.0 F because if you remember, we have a serialization system, which means this is how these get set now. Um, once again, if you are on your own, I would say just create a constructor that takes in a radius and then set radius in here. But we don't have to worry about that. And then we're gonna have one more function in here. We're gonna say public float get radius. And this is just gonna be our getter. So we'll say this return this.radius. Nice and easy, okay? Nothing complicated about circle class. Next up, we have our box 2D class. Let's actually, let's do AABB first because this one's gonna be a little bit simpler than the box 2D since we don't have to worry about orientation. So we'll say private vector 2F center 
private vector to f size. So the center of the box and the size of the box. And we're just going to initialize these to be zeroed vectors so that we don't get any problems with that. And one constructor that might be nice to have if you're doing things inside code is having a constructor that says uh, we have a min and we have a max and I want you to calculate where everything is from that. And basically, and this is AABB, not box2D. All that means is that you would have like the bottom left corner is the min and the top right corner is the max. And then we just sort of get the stuff we need from that. Uh, inside of this regular constructor, we would just set these to these. So I'm going to leave this out. But if we get a min and a max, how do we do that? Well, we would just say this dot size equals new vector to f max dot sub min. So the reason we wrap this in a new vector 2f is because these actually operate on the vectors themselves. So this gives us a new vector, which will be size. And then we subtract the minimum from the maximum, which ends up giving us how long, like this is top y minus bottom y, right x minus left x, which gives us width and height. So that's really nice, easy way to do that. Then we're going to say this dot center equals new vector 2f min dot add new vector 2f. And we're going to say size dot divided by two. And I don't know if they have divide. We'll say multiply by 0 0.5f. And so what this does is if we look at the parentheses, this happens first. So we just get a half size and then we add the half size to the minimum. So we add the half size to the bottom left, which gives us the center. So pretty simple. That's all it does. Now we're going to have a couple more methods. We'll say public vector to F get min and public vector 2f get max and you may be like why the heck did we just do this if we're not going to store them here and the reason being because the min and the max are going to change all the time whereas the size and the center are going to stay the same and no matter where you're at i mean i guess they technically could change too but they'll most likely stay the same and i'm going to create one more constructor too actually just so that we don't get any sort of weird problems for not having an empty constructor okay so in order to get min and get max, we will actually need something called the rigid body, which we would store up here like this. And we would initially set this to null. So I'm debating whether I want to. Let's do this real quick because it'll just make it easier. <laughs> so we'll go into here. We'll say new class for rigid body. And we'll say rigid body 2D. So this is a dependency of our colliders. You can't have a collider without a rigid body. And that's just going to be the way it is because our rigid body or so will sort of be our like temp our container class for all the important stuff like position and orientation. So for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to say private uh, vector to F position and then private uh, float rotation. And this will be we'll do it in degrees for now. There's more efficient ways of doing that and everything. But hey. Degrees works fine. And I'm just going to initialize position to a new vector to f and rotation to 0.0f. .0 so we'll do that. And then I'm going to say this extends component once again. And I think we may have, yeah, I'm going to remove this rigid body because we don't want to get confused. So take that out of components. This is our real rigid body that we're going to have. And then I'm going to import this real quick. Okay. So now we can have a reference to a rigid body. I'm going to hit uh, code and then generate getter and setter. Then we'll just create getter and setter for both of these. Okay. So then we'll go back into our ABB. We should be fine with this now. Let's backtrack real quick. I said the center would never change. That's a lie. The center is going to be changing all the time. So we'll remove all that stuff real quick. And then for get min, what we're going to do is say return new vector 2f this dot rigid body dot position and we're going to assume that's the center dot sub and then we're going to subtract half size so we'll say this dot half size and then inside of here we'll just say this dot half size once we create it we'll say private vector 2f half size equals new vector 2f and then we'll say this dot half size equals size dot divided by two we'll multiply by 0 0.5 f okay and that should actually be new vector 2f 
always make sure you wrap these in new vector 2f otherwise you will get weird problems and then we'll just copy this paste it down here do the same thing and that should be good now okay and then we'll do the same thing over here we'll just say return new vector 2f this dot rigid body dot get position dot add this dot half size and that should give us the correct top right corner so we're going to assume the position is in the center always and then we're going to assume that the half size is just the half size so then if we subtract the half size from the position we get bottom left we add it we get the top right okay so that was the easy one and i totally made that way more complicated than it should be now let's do box 2d real quick this is definitely a little bit more difficult but it's mostly the same so we'll say private vector 2f size equals new vector 2f private vector 2f half size equals new vector 2f and then i'm literally just could copy the constructors because these are going to be the same and we'll just copy and paste box 2d because this is a box 2d now and that should be good now get min and get max those are a little bit more complicated now and i'm not really sure if it makes much sense but what we're going to do for now and we may change this in the future is just implement it the same way that we did these ones let's just copy these in the future what we may do is actually have these return like the bottom leftmost corner of where this box is whether it's rotated or not and then in the future uh, we may change that to do that so uh, let's add in a rigid body up here too and just set that to null for now and then we're going to have one more function public vector 2f array and this is going to return an array of vector 2f which is get vertices so this is going to be like an array of the points and all we're going to do is say vector 2f min equals get min vector 2f max equals get max so this might be it might be important to keep get min and get max the same unless we do change it so <laughs> then what we're going to do is say vector 2f vertices equals and then we're going to do an array initializer then we'll say new vector 2f min dot x min dot y new vector 2f min dot x max dot y new vector 2f max dot x min dot y and new vector 2f max.x max.y this is literally just getting all four vertices from min and max which is also why it's nice to have these because you can get the vertices pretty easily then what we're going to do is we're just going to say for vector 2f vert in vertices and let's actually do a check up here too we'll say if the rigid bodies dot rotation does not equal 0.0f and I already don't like this because we're using floating point numbers. We should not be using equals, not equals operators. We'll talk about that in the next video, possibly, though, because we should be using some sort of comparison with an epsilon because it's better than this. But for now, this is fine. We'll say if the rotation is not zero, which means that the box is rotated, uh, we need some way to rotate all of these vertices. So let's put in a stub method here. So we'll say jmath.rotate and j is for jade since this is the jade engine you can use whatever prefix you want vert this dot rigid body dot get position this dot rigid body dot get rotation so this is going to be a stub method we're going to say to do implement me and rotates point vector 2f about center vector 2f uh, by rotation and this is going to be a float in degrees okay so what this is going to do is it's just going to take in a vector 2f this is the point and it's going to rotate it about this point so this is the center by this many degrees so what we're doing is we're just rotating every single point around the center of the square and then uh changing these so that they're appropriate but I do not think we have enough time to go over this real quick. So we're going to save this for another video too when we start implementing some utility functions that will be helpful. Okay. And then finally, what we'll do down here is we'll just say return vertices, which should be good. That should return everything. Um, right now, if it's rotated, we're not going to get the correct implementation, but we'll fix that in the future. 
let's go ahead and we're going to create one more class up here inside of maybe rigid body would be a better place. We're going to call this intersection detector 2D. This is going to be in charge of detecting whether two objects are intersecting. And so this will be very helpful for getting us in the mindset of telling, like being able to tell, hey, we have a point and a circle is the point in the circle. Or, hey, we have a line and a box is the line intersecting the box and everything. And so this whole class is going to help us a ton with getting the intuition we need to be able to tell whether two shapes are intersecting, which is like 90% of a physics engine. Well, like 50% of a physics engine. <laughs> And uh, this is going to contain a lot of useful helper classes for our physics engine. So, or functions, not classes. But yeah, I think I'm going to save the start of implementing this for the next tutorial. Uh, we'll go over a brief introduction to how we can tell if point is uh, in a shape or on a line. And then we'll go ahead and implement those methods. And we will also do the line versus primitive test. So let's go down here. We're going to say... Um, we are going to do point versus primitive tests, and we are going to implement, copy this, line versus primitive test. So these two will contain all the useful functions so that we can tell if a point is inside or on top of any primitive, and then whether a line is intersecting any primitive. But for now, I think this is going to cover it for this tutorial. Uh, we just sort of laid out the foundation of the things that we need. If you enjoyed this, please hit like, sub like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial in which we actually start implementing some of these functions. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks.